This is CAF TV. Welcome everyone. I'm Alex Bastiabanski bringing you all the action from the Canadian Academy of Football and we've got a great show for you today. Tons of highlights from the CAF Supergroup and once again goals were coming fast and furious with 16 scored in just three games. Also members of Burlington SC will join me in the studio to talk about their program. In addition, we've got a feature on Epic FC, fresh off a massive result against one of the top teams in the U.S. last weekend. All that and more coming up later on. But first, let's get to those sport check game highlights. And as mentioned, two weeks ago, Epic FC were in New Jersey for a showcase tournament. In their place, the Epic under-13 squad filled in at Esther Shiner Stadium and pulled off a huge win against Jenga Academy. So this past weekend, it was the under-14's turn to make their super group debut, and they were pressed to the limit by Dragon Force Academy. Half game highlights now, brought to you by Sportcheck. What are you sweating for? It was an ugly, and I mean ugly, day for soccer last Sunday, but that didn't stop these two teams from putting on a show early on. Epics Carson Larrabee, that's a name you're gonna be hearing a lot of today. Plays give and go with Michael Washington, who mishits the first attempt. Gets a second crack, but Trent Bask is there to put it out of harm's way, and he gets a big thank you from his keeper for that. Dragon Force strike first, 17th minute, Shafiq Wilson comes out to make the initial stop. Nobody picks up Samuel Correa though, he fires at home, DFC draws first blood, and they lead one zip. Seven minutes later, Mark DeLang threads the needle for Kai Vicari, who coolly flicks it over the charging Wilson. 2-0 for Dragon Force. That woke up epic, though. Carson Larrabee does all the heavy lifting, feeds Washington. He's not about to miss twice in a row. Epic cuts the lead to 2-1. Just before halftime, Sal Mazzaferro with the corner, Moises Corona with a gorgeous header, Alessandro Procaccini with the quick hands makes the stop though. On to the second half, we go off another corner kick for Epic. It's a mad scramble in front of the net. Finally, Andre Vicchini pounces on it and we're all knotted up at one through 49 minutes of a play. Just a minute later, it's Carson Laramie with the are you kidding me cross that finds Vicchini on the far side of the six. Ultimately, it's Dylan Moya knocking it home. Epic goes up 3-2 through 50. Many minutes later, Laramie just toying with his opponent here. Dishes it off for Washington, who then hits Mazzaferro out front. Epic scoring goals and getting some serious style points for them too. Ultimately though, these are the only points that really matter and that they really care about. Three of them, they win 4-2. And afterwards, Sal Mazzaferro was happy with how the team adjusted to being down early. I liked it. We kept on fighting until the whistle blew, and I think our coach made a big influence at halftime with a change of formation. We played five in the midfield, which really made a huge impact in the game, and I think we just kept fighting, and we got the win. The second game of the day featured two undefeated teams going head-to-head. -head. Now, both GCS and Burlington SC won their opening games the previous weekend, so it was a battle of the unbeatens, and the squads pulled out all the stops and a thrilling back and forth encounter. Both teams were impressive in their opening day victories and it doesn't take GCS long to get on the board in this one. Second minute, Henry Allen from, oh, 39 and a half yards out. You can't place that any better, just under the bar. Definitely a nominee for the goal of the week. Just a minute later though, Burlington nearly draws even Christian Stancevich. Curls in the free kick, the volley smacks off the post though. Just before the half, Brandon Wallace hammers a shot from 25 yards out. Andy Latchett though with the save of the week, knocking it over the bar. To the second half we go, Burlington's pressure pays off. Stancevich gets dropped in the box, the referee wastes no time in pointing to the spot. Then Stancevich coolly pops it home and we're all knotted up at one through 63 minutes of play. Just six minutes later, it's super striker Ilya Illich. Three goals last weekend, and he adds to his yearly total with this beauty. Gorgeous. Burlington up 2-1 through 69 minutes of play. Just three minutes after that strike, though, Nick Andriola splits the Burlington defense, feathers the ball past Lacic. 2-2 through 72. And who would provide the knockout punch in this one? Well, six minutes later, the B-Town defensive miscue pops to Marco Primorano. Who lowers the boom? 
3-2 GCS after 78 minutes, and that's how it finished up. A thrilling back-and-forth battle. The man with the game winner, Marco Primorano, talks about what GCS had to do to emerge victorious. The other team was very aggressive in the beginning, so we had to play the same. And then our team headed out with a goal in the beginning, an early one, and then they pressured us really well, and then at the end of the game, we came back and took the game out. Welcome back to CAF TV. I'm Alex Bastjavansky. The final game of the CAF Supergroup last weekend featured Jenga Academy and CAP. Now, both squads lost their opening games on May 24th, but CAP came out swinging this time around, and they served notice they'll be a force to be reckoned with this season. The final game of the afternoon was played in a steady downpour. Jenga notched five goals in the opening game last weekend, but had no such offensive prowess on this day against Cap. It was all Cap all the time. Early on, Ola Ogonute slides right through the two Jenga players, but the keeper was able to weather the storm, and Jenga clears it out, and the game remains scoreless. 19th minute, though, Cap draws first blood. Nick O'Reilly. This guy was everywhere on Sunday. The cross is money. Luke Creighton's loving that as he knocks it home. One zip cap with much more to come from them. Just a minute later, it's O'Reilly on the receiving end of another gorgeous cross here. He puts it home with a dynamite header. 2-0 cap, and O'Reilly gives props to his teammate for the awesome assist on that one. Sadly, not many chances for Jenga on this day. Sebastian Stefan out front has his attempt knocked over the bar. In the 32nd minute, O'Reilly, he just takes over again. He turns on the Jets, smokes it past the keeper. Three nil cap, O'Reilly with two goals on the day. Out of the second half we go, and O'Reilly, eh, he wasn't slowing down. He makes things happen from the wing again, but Spencer right here, Gets rejected by the goalie's best friend. Still a three goal spread. 53rd minute now. O'Reilly gets things going. He floats it into Josh Gaspari, who lays it off for right. He gets his revenge. No crossbar this time. And it's four zip for Cap. And they just kept coming in waves. Three minutes later, Gaspari tries his luck, blows it just wide though. And then it's O'Reilly playing give and go, but his shot gets deflected just wide of the goal post. They do get one more to make the route complete. Marcelo Flores to right to Gray Yates, who just squeezes this one in past the keeper. 5-0 for Cap. Uh, just in complete control on this day. That's how this one finishes up. A week after notching five goals, Jenga has held off the score sheet completely and somewhat shockingly, actually, considering their strong play against Epic the week before. Cap has mentioned dominant in the 5 0 win. On to the Yogurties Supergroup standings now, and in first place, Epic and GCS Academy tied uh, with two wins in two games. Look at Epic's goal total 13 goals in two games. Tied for third, Cap and Burlington SC. And then Dragon Force and Jenga uh, in fifth, yet to record a win on the season so far. And just remember, for all the latest news, stats, and standings, head to CAFSoccer.com. I'm joined now in the studio by the head coach of the Burlington SC Academy Under-14 team, which plays in the super group, Chris Laco. Welcome to the studio, buddy. Thanks for having me. Yes, I uh, quite the game, huh? Uh, yeah, Quite was... <laughs> the game uh, last Sunday. It looked like you guys were going to pull it out, just couldn't hold on to that lead in the end. Yeah, it was uh, it was disappointing. The, they showed great fight after they scored uh, the goal against us in the first, I believe, first or second minute. And they battled back. They took the lead in the last few minutes. They just collapsed defensively, and they, they allowed the two goals. But it was a disappointing result, but what can you do? Is this a team you guys had played before in exhibition or anything, or was that your first exposure to them? Uh, it was our first encounter with this team. Uh, what was disappointing with me was how we allowed the goal in the first two minutes, and for the rest of the game we were fighting back. And then when we did manage to fight back the lead, it looked like we didn't have the energy to maintain it. Mm -hmm. So maybe it was either fitness or a mental issue, but there's something that we'll have to talk about more in training, how to hold that lead. Well, last week you guys won 4-1 in your Supergroup debut. Um, I interviewed you after the game, and you mentioned that even though 
you were happy with the, with the win. Um, you were a bit frustrated uh, with the, some of the play of the team and the shape and stuff. Was that a problem that reared its head again on Sunday, did you think? Uh, yes, it was. We, we are a new team. We've only been together now for six weeks. So uh, I may be a little bit rough on the players, but uh, our shape and our tactics and our discipline has to be there. Right. And a lot of this is new for the players. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to focus in our training sessions on how to incorporate our tactics, depending on the situation in the field. And we need to understand how to keep the balance in the midfield, which is what happened in our in our both our second goals, where we allowed space in the middle, and they were allowed to counter through it. Well, they had a quick start, um, but then you guys ended up. Uh, who used the word dominating? But you really took the play to them for two thirds of the game. Um, took the lead. We're up two one. Um, they just seemed to make the most of the opportunities that they had, didn't they? Yeah, we, we were we were unfortunate with some situations. We hit the post, we had a few near misses, but that's football and sometimes it happens. Not always the better team wins, but hopefully we can come out next time with a better performance. Anyone stand out yesterday that you were really impressed with from your own team? Uh, a few players. Ilya has been having a good season, Ilya Ilyich, and mm -hmm. a few other players are having a, a good season so far. So. As long as they can maintain this momentum going in and we can hold the lead when we take the lead, I think we'll, we'll be able to pull out a few better results next time. We're going to talk a bit more about Ilya, mm -hmm. of course, because he's one of the star players and also the Burlington SC Academy in general. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to take a quick break. CAF TV will be back in just a moment. Welcome back to CAF TV. I'm Alex Bastiavansky, joined in the studio by the head coach of the Burlington SC Under-14s who play in the CAF Supergroup, Chris Laco, joining me in the studio. So let's let's talk about Burlington SC Academy then. Um, started in 2012, that much I know. Uh, tell me a bit, of, a bit more about the academy and what it's all about. Uh, what the academy is looking to do is looking to create a, a professional European environment within North America. One of the first where we're trying to create an environment where the players are training five days a week and playing a game on structured, organizational, technical, positional, tactical, fitness plans so that everything is planned out for the players and in a few years we're going to see whether we've benefited the players and look in a few years where they are and where they're heading and whether our program has been up to par with our standards of getting them to move over to Europe or to get a professional or to get a scholarship or to further their career in football. You were mentioning before the show started to me, he was talking about some interesting statistics about how many practices, mm -hmm. training sessions that Europeans have as opposed to Canadians. So just talk about that for one second. That was really interesting stuff. Uh, when I was looking at, at the, when I was doing research on European academies and how they're training five to seven times a week plus having a game, I started to compare it to our environment here in Canada. And with most teams training here three times a week and uh, academies in Europe training five times a week, it's a difference between 144 hours in a year. So when we're young, when people are saying we can compete at a young age, 10, 11, 12. And then what happens? Everyone asks the same question, yeah. like, what happens? Why can our guys compete at a young level and then yeah. not later on, right? Yeah. And then the difference is when you multiply 144 hours by four years, which is from U14 to U18, when our players can't compete, then there, there's the answer. Yeah. I'm glad you did the math on that because <laughs> it wouldn't have been my no strong problem. point. Uh, and now you guys have teams in under eight all the way through under 14 and boys yeah. and girls too, right? Boys and girls as well. So yeah. We're trying to build a, a structural uh, academy for both boys and girls that are competitive and are training four to five times a week in a professional environment. Right, and you, you were impressed enough with Burlington SC to come in yeah. um, because let's talk about your story for a second mm -hmm. here. You're actually an external hire mm -hmm. from Burlington SC mm -hmm. because you've got your own company, clfootball.com. Yeah. Yeah. So why did you go to Burlington SC? Why did they bring you in? Uh, when I met with Mihail Markovic, who is, who is running the, the Burlington Academy, um, he had some great things to say and our philosophy really matched up. What we're looking to do is recruit, looking to create a professional environment for players to give them a fighting chance to be able to play professionally in Europe. And for us to do that, we have to be dedicated to providing the players with the trainings, the facilities, and giving them the opportunity and exposure for them to be able to do that. So yeah. he really supported my ideas and, and our philosophies match. He's, so I thought it'd be he's perfect. He's a passionate guy. He's Definitely. very passionate. He's passionate. He's passionate about player development too. Mm -hmm. um, so former pro soccer player yourself, mm -hmm. And you've globe trotted a bit in your playing yeah. background. We're actually now 
uh, looking at some great old footage of Chris that I actually took a couple of years ago when he was playing professionally. I always get a kick out of that. Um, but let's talk about that. So, so where you played and where, where you played first of all, because you were a college player, yeah. and then where you ended up in pro. Uh, when when I was in the youth ranks, I played with uh, NTC, which isn't in existence anymore in Ontario, unfortunately. But I was at the national training program, and then from there I went to Elon University in North Carolina. And from Elon University, I transferred to St. Bonaventure University. Uh, it was a uh, great four years before coming back and playing in the CSL for Toronto, Croatia, and Brantford before eventually going to Croatia where I had a brief, very brief stint with uh, Hajduk where I was playing with uh, Actually NK traveling products. to Croatia to play professionally yeah. there. With where, NK. by the way, he did meet his fiance. I just found <laughs> out as well, so. Who's in the studio right He's now. Who's in the smiling. studio right now. We should have brought her on, but it's too late. <laughs> That's but, okay. uh, so lots of great things happened in Croatia. Uh, yeah. Obviously met a fiance, had yeah. a professional career. Yeah. You came back. Is this, so, is this something now that you see from possibilities that exist for these kids? Is there that much talent there in this academy with your team that they could further their careers later on? I believe so and the, the, the biggest criticism I have is people say there's no talent in Canada. I would argue that there's talent in Canada, there's just no one here to develop it. So we're looking to create an environment where we can develop this talent to further them on to, to create professional careers. Yeah. One guy who really stood out, uh, caught my eye to the casual observer anyway, um, Ilya Illich. Mm -hmm on your team, three goals last weekend, uh, one goal this past Sunday. He just, as he said, he just stands out. He just slices right through that defense. He's always dangerous, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He, he's a combination of pace, power, and, and he can definitely finish. So whenever he has the ball near the box, we, we definitely have a goal scoring threat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to also mention that the midfielders and the defenders and, and our wingers are also doing a great opportunity of providing him the service for him to shine. So yeah. the whole team I am happy with, and Ilya has been doing a fantastic job. Yeah, we're almost out of time. Uh, just want to get a quick comment on you. How are you enjoying the CAF experience so far? How are you liking it and how's the team liking it so far? Oh, it's, it's, it's been fantastic. Uh, walking into a stadium an hour before, having your locker room, having all the equipment provided, being provided your warm-up time, the announcers announcing the goals, walking out in two lines. It's, it's the first time that I can honestly say that I've seen a professional environment for youth players within North America. And that's really good to hear you've been all over so it's nice to hear that <laughs> that it's actually starting to happen now so if people want to find out more okay first of all about your company mm -hmm. it's uh, clfootball.com yep. we've got it on the screen there uh, Burlington uh, would be Burlington uh, SC Academy dot com yep. uh, and uh, thanks for being here oh no problem it's great to learn a, a lot more about it and uh, we're looking forward to covering you guys this Sunday another big game coming up yeah another big game and I hope we can pull out the, the result all right CAF TV will be back in just a moment Welcome back to CAF TV, I'm Alex Bastiavansky. Well, as we've seen the past two weekends, Epic FC are a force to be reckoned with in the Canadian Academy of Football. But it's not just in CAF that Epic are excelling. They've also held their own against some of the top programs in America as well. And we find out more about what makes Epic tick right now in this week's Team Profile. If you look up epic in the dictionary, words that describe it are listed as heroic, ambitious, grand, and Herculean. While this may be true in regards to Epic FC, the team also has its own definition. A lot of people don't know the meaning, what it means. It's actually enhanced performance in children, right? So the goals are for Epic is to bring out the best in children, top elite players. They all want something more and we just drive and we push them, push them, push them. And bring out the best is exactly what Epic has done. Their teams are comprised of some of the province's best young players. And the under 14 team that plays in the CAF Supergroup takes its game beyond borders. Well, when we go down to America, we play in the Supergroups or Platinum Divisions. Uh, back last week in New Jersey, we came to the finals. Sadly, we lost, but we played very well every game, winning, having two wins and sat one loss. 
This international success has expanded the horizons of epic footballers. In 2014, 11 of its players were selected to a scholarship with Tottenham Hotspur in England. One of them was star midfielder Carson Larrabee. Carson, he's, you know, he's been in the, the known cup. He's been invited to Tottenham two years in a row at such a young age. He's very experienced, a lot of experience for being 13 years old. It's just, he's, he's got a good head on his shoulders and with the right training, the right attitude that he has, he can keep going forward and really get far in his, in his soccer career. Yeah, the Genoa Cup was a great experience. I mean, there's 8,000 kids that tried out and uh, 11 made it. We went to England, we played in Wembley Stadium. Uh, we played against Spain, Spain, Brazil, Argentina, tons of teams. I mean, it was one of the best experiences in my life. I couldn't ask for more. Another standout is right back Justin Piku. He's one of the best right backs you'll ever see. The speed that he takes on, the new age of this game with Justin, he breaks down that wing. Justin's fell right into that role where he gets up. He's one of the fastest defenders I've ever seen. While those are just two examples, Epic's entire lineup is star-studded. There's balance and there's depth, and not just with the under-14s. Two weeks ago, when they were at their showcase in New Jersey, the under-13 squad stepped up in calf to take their place and recorded a huge win over Jenga playing up a year. It shows that our, our team is very strong. It shows that our, our younger team is just can just do the exact same things that we can do. We can, they, can tr they train with us and they can train, they become better off of us too. Most importantly, Epic is about development and their players feel their game has gone to a whole new level since joining the team. Epic has really helped me with my game with like opening my eyes and seeing what I should be looking forward to in the future and helping me uh, become a better player. They're a very strong group, a very competitive team. They work hard and train harder, so that makes makes your game go higher. And yeah, they're really they're really good to be around. They're good friends. They're like family. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch Epic this year. Okay, on to the calf countdown. The top three plays of the week. Number three, a guy we just heard from, Carson Larrabee, with the incredible cross. Dylan Moya finishes off the pass from Kai Bakari. That was the game winner as Epic knocked off Dragon Force 4-2. Number two, Nick O'Reilly with another incredible cross for Cap. Luke Creighton finishes off the one-timer. Gorgeous. One of five cap goals on the day as they drop Jenga by a 5-0 count. And number one, Henry Allen from 40 yards out. Not often you see a 40-yard goal. Tucks it just under the bar. Beautiful. Definitely worthy of our play of the week. And our super group super player, the calf performer of the week, it's got to go to Nick O'Reilly this time around. The Cap Dynamo had two gorgeous goals on the day and set up two others along with several great chances. He was everywhere on Sunday. Jenga just couldn't slow him down. Nick O'Reilly, definitely our Cap super group, super player for week two. And that's all the time we've got for this week. Just remember though, there's lots of different ways that you can keep up to date with all the age groups of the Canadian Academy of Football. Check out the league website at calfsoccer.com or check us out on Twitter at calf underscore football. And you can also follow our Facebook page as well. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. I'll see you next week for more Calf TV.